The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And three, two, one. We're live. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. I am so excited to welcome you. We had over 3,780 people register for this webinar. So excited to welcome you. It's the very first of our video skill builder webinars, a 30-minute session with a real Powtoon Power user to show us their top tips and tricks. Also, a little bit of great information about video and visual communications. Let's do introductions. Uh, right there on the right, that's me. I'm Nick Liebman, head of content here at Powtoon. We will be joined by a mystery guest, a, uh, a, a real Powtoon Power user, someone who's been using Powtoon for years to create video and visual communications for their work. Uh, and they're going to give us their top tips and tricks. And also, all of you, all of you are here as well. Please give me a shout out. Make sure that uh, that uh, you're hearing me. You can see my screen right in that question box there. Let me know your name. Let me know where you're joining us from today. And also let me know how are you, how is your company handling the return to the office? Are you returning yet? Uh, do you have a plan for that? What's it like in your region uh you know so re really excited to hear from oh lots of people already chiming in here uh we've got uh frederick okay yes okay on the sound okay on the screen great we've got uh marge who's joining us from edmonton we've got carrie from washington dc hello carrie we've got claire from new hampshire jeff from brazil who's a researcher welcome jeff we've got lisa who's joining us from calgary alberta canada uh and uh wow so many people here we had so many registrants you guys just gonna keep naming some names here welcoming you guys on the call we've got rick who's here from south carolina Nope, sorry, Southern California. Click on it before you start reading, Nick. We've got Cher, can see the slides. PhD, I'm a PhD student in the UK uh, and still out of the lab. Ah, yes. Well, many people I know uh, are, are really still in a lockdown situation or maybe still in a wait and see situation. Let me know if that's the case. Uh, we've got Dina, who is a librarian from Puerto Rico. Welcome. Uh, let's see here. Hello, Roberta from Bronzeville, Texas, an educator. Uh, they're finished for the year now, but next year is still being planned. I think that's also where a lot of people are. Joanne, who, or sorry, pardon me, Joan, who is joining us from St. Louis. We've got Costas from London. We've got Marty, who's a kindergarten teacher in Indianapolis. I actually went to graduate school in Indianapolis at Butler University. So wonderful to have uh, some Hoosiers with us today. So many people, but you know what, guys, you didn't come here to say hello. You came here to get some good insights about creating videos for the post-COVID reality. So let me go through quickly what we're in for today. And uh, please do send me your questions along the way. I'm going to be checking in. We're going to have a chance to do Q&A at the end. The first thing we're going to talk about is the challenge for businesses ahead. We're going to meet our mystery guest, a genuine Powtoon Power user. We're going to go through some of their top tips for video creation live in the Powtoon studio. And we're going to answer your most pressing Powtoon questions. Again, just leave those in the questions box and I'll be going through those as we get to the end. But first, as you guys know, and many of you said, we're maybe a little bit in between. Maybe we're still working remotely. Maybe the year has ended. We're an educator and we're still in a wait and see uh, place for the future. We know from these headlines, many, many companies are looking to make remote work a permanent part of the way that they do business. And we can even see Twitter CEO has said that they're basically going to be working from home forever. I know many companies are in that situation and kind of creating a hybrid. We know that work from home is here to stay. And in this new world of remote everything, businesses need to quickly adapt, pivot, and embrace the new remote reality, right? I think this is something we've all experienced. Very quickly, we all had to shift to remote work and we had to figure out what's working, what's not. How do we replace those things we used to do organically in person? How do we communicate better? What are the technology technologies and the tools that we need to collaborate. So I think we've all been doing that. And we've seen in this time a, a, an increase in the use of like video and remote communication. But we also saw people with increased stress, increased worry, decreased enjoyment. So it's not just about 
having these tools and and turning them on and you know communicate 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 maybe that means slack messages maybe that means teams uh messages maybe that means emails it depends on the culture of your company but all of it can lead to exhaustion to increased worry increased stress and decreased enjoyment more than a video call today we need effective visual communications and I also want to say, I think not just in the workplace, but everywhere, communication right now is key. Connecting to each other is key to address all of the things that are making our world a difficult, painful place today. So uh, visual communications is a piece of that, certainly in the workplace and certainly to help your company culture adapt to the world that we live in today. So we have a very special guest. No further ado, I will be introducing here Amy Sheffield, who is an instructional designer on the talent development team at ConAgra Brands. She's our Powtoon Power user for the day. Amy, are you there? I am here. Can you oh, hear me okay? I can hear you're coming in loud and clear. I'm so, so happy to welcome you today. Uh, I do just want to introduce you to the people. So please tell us about yourself. Tell us about ConAgra. People might have heard that name before. Maybe they haven't. And what is the role of video and visual communications in your work? All right. Thank you so much. So again, my name is Amy Sheffield and I work for ConAgra Brands. And if you haven't heard of us, hopefully today you will know us. Um, we are a, a food company, so we make food, lots and lots of food. I can't even begin to start telling you all the brands that we make, but I'm going to throw a few out at you that maybe you recognize, especially if you're here in the United States. Some of those include bird's eye vegetables, Pam cooking spray, one of my favorites, Duncan Hines cake mixes, mm. healthy choice frozen meals, another favorite of mine, Ready Whip, which is whipped uh, whipped cream. Uh, we are in the plant-based foods. Gardein is a big one that we have. Um, a couple others, we have Swiss Miss Hot Cocoa, Orville Redenbacher popcorn, Act Two popcorn, Slim Jim meat snacks, the list goes on. We, we have a lot. So um, we do about 11 billion in revenue with 50 locations in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and a few other international locations. So we've got a wide audience. We have corporate locations as well as plant, our folks that work in the plant. So video and visual communications is very important so we can get messages out to all of our employees. Uh, and so we've got different platforms based on their location so that they can use these uh, and utilize these visual communications that we uh, that we create. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And so you're creating videos that are training people. Are you what what's the what's the context there and what, what kinds of videos are you putting together? I'm putting together a little bit of everything. So the team that I'm on is very enterprise based. So one week I may be creating a video on how managers can have empowered one on one meetings with their employees. The next week I might be creating a fire safety video for our plant employees. Uh, so there's a lot. Um, I have used Powtoon to create kind of prequel, prequel videos um, for software demos to get people uh, up to speed on a certain piece of software that they're going to learn. Uh, we use it for our travel and expense. We educate people on how to use their travel and expense cards. Um, even some of our science based because we are a food company, uh, some like maybe the building blocks of a finished product. So we are using this tool robustly across our entire company. Amazing. And how many employees uh, at ConAgra? We have approximately 18,000 employees, and that includes, you know, again, all of our corporate locations as well as our plant employees that are out there, you know, making the food. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, I got to ask, what has, how has ConAgra managed the COVID crisis and what has been the impact on your role? So my company has managed it, I feel, amazingly. So 
Uh, our plant locations are have still functioned as normal uh, because we already have the ability to social distance uh, in our plants. They already have appropriate P PPE. And as you know, people have to eat. We have to keep the supply chain going. We have to get food on the table for people. Now for my role, I am able to work remotely from my home and being able to create these trainings and learnings at home. So again, utilizing Powtoon, which as you know, is a web-based tool has made it very easy for me to continue doing what I've always done, uh, just doing it from home. Yeah. So yeah, um, it, it's, it, it's not been a huge change for me, aside from needing to maybe run into an audio recording studio here and there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I've been able to kind of function uh, full steam ahead. What about in terms of the volume of videos that you need to create? Uh, what was it say last year and what and what is it now well it's it's that's interesting because my organization is seeing what we're doing uh what the types of different types of videos that we're putting out so we are definitely getting more requests now for these types of videos um we've been steadily busy and again with this um covid uh, I can talk in a moment about one of the projects that I'm working on that relates to COVID and how I'm using Powtoon for that. So we have a steady request of videos that, that we're doing, and I, I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Definitely. Cool. And uh, just another question then. So what is the plan at ConAgra Brands for returning to the office? And what role will video and visual communications play? I think you, you, know, you hinted at that a little bit, that it's part of a project you're working on now. Tell us more. Yeah, so we are still working on what our plan is for returning to the office. As you know, the data is changing daily at this time. And so we've got a team in place that's kind of monitoring everything and, and making decisions. Um, we have a basic understanding of how everything will go. We are planning on returning at some point and it, it will be a three phase approach uh, where different roles will come into the office. Um, and there will be lots of safety precautions in place. People will be wearing masks. There'll be temperature taking stations, uh, a lot, a lot. There's a lot going into it. And again, it's changing daily. So my role is very important right now because we are working with these safety teams to come up with an instructional video that we can send out to our employees that are going to be in these different waves. Mm -hmm. and. The, and we are using Powtoon for that to create these videos and embed it into our learning platforms uh, with additional information like maps of our businesses so people know where the temperature taking stations are. Wow. They know where they can pick up safety masks. So yeah, we uh, right now, based on what I'm working on, I have a set of about six or seven short videos that will all be packaged together, letting people know kind of the new protocols, what is the new normal, mm -hmm. uh, what, what their roles will be going forward and how, that will, how office life will change. Amazing. One last question, I guess this one isn't in the slides, but I'm just curious is before we take a look at your uh, tips and tricks, how long have you been using, have you been a Powtoon user? I know you and I have known each other for at least a year, year and a half or so. How long have you been using Powtoon? Yeah. I, be, I it's, it's so hard to, to remember. I believe it's been at least two years, if yeah. not just a little longer. Yeah. Uh, I know, you know, we, we had been using some different software and this came about and we, I know that we did like the free trial and it was a game changer for us. And so several of us here got licenses, but uh, yeah, no, it's, and, and even though, you know, I've been using it for two years as when I show, talk to you guys about the tips and tricks, I am still learning. I am mm -hmm. still finding new ways to do things, better ways to do things, um, how to be creative and really make those videos pop. Amazing. Well, I'm much like our audience. I cannot wait to dive right into the studio and see your uh, top video making tips and tricks. So I think that uh, without further ado here, what I'm going to do is hand over the presentation to you. Just one moment. Right. Let's see here. Change presenter. Wait. Thanks, everyone, for your patience while I uh, bumble through my interface here. <laughs> Amy, 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 <laughs> here you are. Where did you go? Why can't I just... Thanks, everyone, for your 
for your patients. I'll do it this way. Make presenter. So you should be hey, there we are. seeing your permissions there. And if you'd be so kind as to take over and share your screen, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Amy's studio, in the Powtoon studio. So Woo! I think, uh, take us through what you want to show us today and those things where you really uh, find these are the most important things. These are the things that save you time. These are the things that help you make a video that has serious impact. Take it away. Awesome. And you can see my screen just fine, right? Yep, I can see it. You guys uh, in Perfect. the audience, please feel free to chime in. I think that uh, you should be able to see it. it's the Powtoon Studio with the, the ConAgra Brands logo on it there. And if you have any questions along the way, ladies and gentlemen, please do uh, just type that into the box that we're going to be circling back to answer questions at the end. Take it away, Amy. Awesome. Thank you. So I could sit here all day and give you guys thousands of tips and tricks on what I found to be very useful in making videos. However, we don't have that much time. So I have picked just a few that I think have really helped me create videos timely and keep videos very interesting um, as, we, as we create them. And again, I'm creating lots of different videos uh, throughout the company. Um, so one of the first ones that I am going to talk about, this is just my little, my little intro slide here, mm -hmm. um, is the use of a storyboard or a script. Um, so this is an example of one of our storyboards that we use for coming up with scripting. Mm -hmm. So I'm just throwing in some examples here. So it, the way that I've created video is we come up with a script first. Mm -hmm. The script is going to help dictate then how I am going to create the video. So as you guys know, each slide in Powtoon allows for 20 seconds of audio. So when, and a lot of times I'm not the one writing the script. We have other people who are subject matter experts, they're the ones writing the script, uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting the ideas across. And then I ask them, hey, you know, make sure you give me kind of your vision of what you want to see on the screen. And, and then I have artistic license to kind of go and modify that. Mm -hmm. So we tell people, you know, when you're creating your script, try to strive for about 40 words per per area here because that is going to equate approximately to about 20 seconds of audio mm -hmm. now i i also record audio uh, as well and we have other voice talent here in our office um, so i'm able to break that out for our voice talent or i record it myself so again i like to start with the script first it really helps me then start to visualize what i want to show in each slide amazing and again yep so i will i will um i will take a script and and you know scripts change they're never going to be the same the one i'm working on right now for our return to office has probably changed about six times already so it's very helpful to have that script and i work off of it and i will i actually i do a little old school i will print out my script and i will notate all right this this first one here that's going to be slide one this one here this is going to be slide two and then as i record my audio i'm able to kind of match that up so um yeah so, it's, so, so i think you know it's really important here to to note that like really the first tip about using powtoon is is not about using powtoon it's about getting the ideas down and it's about leaving leaving some space there, thinking about the structure ahead of time, so that uh, as things change, those edits are a lot easier. Making the final product, the, all your time spent in the studio, will be more productive. Taking this step first, I think that's so powerful. Exactly, and not every video, of course, has audio, which is fine. So we ask uh, our customers to provide us, yay, what are some key words that maybe you'd like us to flash up on the screen to get to get those ideas across as well. So again, not every not every video will have audio. A lot of ours do. It's just a nice way we like to have the visuals and then we like to have the audio and then it, and then a lot of times we'll have additional resources that people can download within our learning platform so they can have a tangible copy as well. So so yeah, definitely 
And let me tell you, you guys, when I started using Powtoon, I, I was all rogue. I was wild. I just kind of said, you want this video? Okay. And I, you know, I would just kind of start throwing stuff together. And I then realized after many changes and, and everything, mm -hmm. it was much easier to get all your thoughts on paper, so to speak, and get that narrowed down. And it, it's, it makes my video creation so much easier. Great. So I would say, and this is a very simple way to do it as well. You can hand you can send this electronically to somebody and say, all right, here you go. Start providing your 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 thoughts and words. Do to that in, in a Word doc or whatever it is that, that uh, your organization uses to uh, collaborate. Uh, that's great. Now, Amy, I, I do want yeah. us to uh, maybe when, when we get to the Q&A, we can get back. You mentioned uh, audio, I think voiceover tracks, things like that. I know that people have a lot of questions about that. So I, I want to just Ooh, yeah. put, put that in the parking lot. So we come back to in the q and I'm also sensitive to everyone's time. So let's let's move on and talk about your next tip. Is that all right? That is all right. Nice. Okay, so the next one is transitions. Mm -hmm. I love transitions. And a, a transition, for those of you that are new to Powtoon, is a way uh, to transition from one slide to the next. Mm -hmm. So instead of just creating something that might look like a PowerPoint and it just, you know, click, it just all of a sudden the next slide is there. Mm -hmm. There are lots of wonderful transitions that you guys can use. And when you're watching it as an entire video, it just makes it flow very nicely. Like you are truly watching a video. And so there are wonderful, uh, some of my favorites that I like to use, I like to have the camera change, there's camera up, camera down, the different slides, um, a slice, and especially like these fan up and down. It just really makes the transition from one thought process to another very nice and it flows and it's just that little visual spark that makes the video appear like a video and not just here's your animated PowerPoint slides that I'm talking to. So um, I go through and I will, uh, you know, I create my video first and then I go through and I add my transitions and I, I use, um, I will mix them up. Each slide will have a, a different transition. It just really keeps things fresh mm -hmm. and, and people enjoy it. So um, we, use, we use just about all of these, uh, depending on the type of video uh, we've used, you know, and, and I did a, a very fun one with, uh, for a recognition committee and we used the poof a lot and that was, that was a lot of fun. So do not, um, you know, if you're looking to, to add a little extra sparkle to your videos and make it really flow like a video, come back here and don't forget about your transitions. I think a lot of people, you know, you create your slides and you just, it just kind of, you know, flows into the next one, either a fade or it just doesn't, it can really, really sharpen up a video. And that was something that took me a little while to figure out. And I was like, oh, this really, really is a game changer. Yeah, I love that. And I, you know, another way that I've seen people use it is to have like, a, if you could just click on the transitions again, so we can see the different uh, options available. Uh, so for instance, to use like, I like if you hover over that spirals one. Yeah, that I love that one. It's one of my favorites. And I like me personally, I like to use that one at big divisions uh, in in my subject. Mm -hmm. If I do the intro, and that might be a slide or two, and then I'll use that transition to really signify now we're getting into the body of the work. But like you also said, something I've seen is when people want to have a very simple video, that is, you know, simple backgrounds and like nice big design text. And it's a number of slides, but there's not a whole lot, you know, you don't, you're not using characters or you're not moving things around. There's not a lot of dynamism of movement on the stage. Transitions are also another excellent way to add that. And you have so many options there available. So I think it's an excellent tip. What's next? What's yeah, next? And on then oh, wait, oh, on that, more, the, more the on one more. thing, for, uh, this, is, this is a bonus tip, you guys. Um, okay. If you have, odd, if your slide is 20 seconds long with audio, I like to use, I definitely like to use these longer transitions and that also gives you that little bit of extra space transitioning from one slide to the next. So it's not going audio end and then audio start again. So this, these are great ones to kind of put on the end of very, you know, longer audio slides I found that kind of make that transition a little nicer. I love it. Very Okay. Cool. All right. So, so the next one I'm going to talk about here is it's um, kind of a, a dual is uh, 
the use uh, bringing in video into your Powtoon and then using an overlay so you can bring in additional text for the learner and then you can always go back to that video if it happens to be a long an, a long enough video. So I yes. love, I love bringing so cool. in video video uh, you know and and again you guys have a in in the media area here you've got these um the premium videos here and the the video footage in story blocks and it's it is very up to date i you know i'm working on this return to office and i was out there searching for um you know people in the workplace wearing masks and boom they had a bunch of stuff that i could utilize can you show us so, uh, amy can you just show us in the interface there go ahead and click on on either one of those and show us what it just what it looks like you, how it works you bet you so, betcha. uh and and just to fill the folks in here so in there you've got uh under story blocks we've got some free stock footage that's available uh and uh the folder above there are premium videos available for people who have a, a premium subscription to Powtoon. Uh, and as you can see, this you can search, use search terms there. This pulls uh, up different videos. You can hover and see the preview like that. Uh, and if that's the one you want to use, you can also see information about the clip there. Yeah, it's like 22 seconds in length total. If you have a, uh, a video background that's longer than the slide that you're putting it on, it will, Powtoon will automatically insert the rest of the video on the next slide and that will play seamlessly or you can simply delete that if you've already got timing that you're comfortable with. And so to show us how you've, if you choose one of these, you simply one click and it uh, is your background of your slide. Yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna replace this one here with with another one. So let's take a look at this one here. This is just a woman wearing a mask. So I'm gonna and it's six seconds long. So I'm just gonna bring it in. Mm -hmm. And what it'll do, it does usually take a couple moments. It optimizes the video. We'll just have to ignore that we've got uh, this on her head here. But what's great then is, for instance, this video will only play for six seconds. It's only animated for six seconds. So then if you happen to have that, then I had an additional overlay come in here and I'll just play it. So this overlay would then come in when the animation starts, you could provide additional text. Um, you could then bring in a graphic, you know, again, uh, I, my, my previous one was a video that filled up the entire time frame. So it was great. I could start with the video and add in a little bit of text, bring in my overlay. And you guys, my overlay is nothing more than an animated shape. It's just the, um, the rectangle that I believe goes from top to bottom. Yeah, show, we'll show us. Watch it play here again. Amy, and once it, once it plays here, show us uh, over on the menu on the right where, where people can find these overlays that you're talking about. So the video, technically, it's still in the background, but we've placed this turquoise overlay over it. Where can they find that shape? Yeah. They can find that shape. So I love the animated shapes. They are one of my favorites. Animated shapes right here. And there are lots. Again, by having animation in your videos, it's really going to make them flow. So we use a lot of like like this one here, but you can see they open down, um, they they'll fill, they go, they go left to right. This is one that we use. So even in the instance of text, mm -hmm. for example. If you've got um, a video on the screen or, and you wanna have some text pop here, and I'm just going to bring this up here. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this to the front mm -hmm. so we can see the text. And then I am just gonna shrink it here to fit into the box. There we go, boop doop, I didn't do a very good job there. There we go. So instead of just putting plain old text on your screen, what you can do then is have have the animated shape pop up, boom, and there's your text and it's just highlighted. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you guys have lots of options for your text to come in as well. So uh, you can have it pop, you can have it fade. I really like this word by word. If it's, it's, if it's very short text uh, that I think the user can read quickly, I love to use, uh, to use that one mm -hmm. as, it, as it comes through. So it's just another way, instead of just having plain old text come onto your screen, you can kind of uh, make it sparkle a little bit. 
Amazing. So amazing. Were there, tell me, uh, we've got video backgrounds. We've talked about overlays in this one and also uh, some of the tricks you can do with text, combining overlays, video and text. We've talked about being sure that you've scripted out, storyboarded out your, your script and talked about uh, being sure to have kind of a format for that, especially if you're collaborating with others. We talked about transitions. Are there any other tips here you want to share? Because we're right at about a half half past the hour here, and I want to be sure we have a few minutes for Q&A. You bet. I would say probably if there's any one tip I could give everybody is just get in there and experiment. Um, that is really how I learned. You know, there was the, I attended the webinars and I looked at a lot of the, the help information, but just getting in there and experimenting and trying things out and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, and I would have my peers review some of my videos as well and say, hey, what do you think here? And they'd be like, hey, you know what, that text, I really think, you know, that needs to be more bold or I need, you know, I think this transition was a little rough. See if you can try to make this transition flow into the next um, slide a little easier. So um, just get in there and, and play with it. Um, we also use, again, we use a lot of voiceover and we use a lot of background music as well, which you can get here in the media section. So a lot of times we'll have background music, very low volume, and then the recorded audio over that a little higher. And that, again, that just is one more thing to make this video really pop. You've got the music, you've got the voice, you've got the animation. Uh, you can make this a, a, a true instructional video or informational video, and you can do it all right here in, in the studio. I love it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it. It is time for your live Q&A. And uh, so if you've got a question, go ahead and, and type that into us here. And uh, Claire is asking, and I think this is actually a good way that we can get into uh, some of that voiceover and audio stuff. Claire is asking, how do you adjust audio volume, especially when having background music and a voiceover? I'm just going to actually make you the presenter one more time, uh, Amy. Okay. And if you would. Oh, let me go find mine. There we go. Yes, you bet. To, to just show All us. All right. Let's talk audio for a moment. Okay, so let's talk audio. As you guys can tell, I love to talk. I have a big mouth, so audio is my life. So a lot of times here, what we'll do is I will record my audio um, separately. Now let me just go. I happen to be working on one right now. Right. I will just go to my return. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab uh, an MP3 here. Um, so we always I record so it the MP3 is the, the voice portion is just used on that current slide. I just want to pause you for one yeah. moment because that's an easy thing to uh, be confused about. I know that I, I was when I first started working with Powtoon. So you have the ability uh, to put a voiceover uh, track on either your entire Powtoon or just on one slide. And so that's, a, Amy, that's your guys practice there at ConAgra. You mm -hmm. tend to do the voiceover per slide like you just showed us to do there. Yes, and then our our music will then run through the entire presentation. And a lot of times, um, you know, I'll find a song that's two or three minutes long, and then what it can do is it can loop, it'll just continue, and then it, it plays throughout your entire Powtoon. So I don't know if I have any music on my desktop. Let me just look here real quick. Um, and we also have all those, uh, if you see there on the right, uh, yep. those premium soundtracks and free soundtracks available for people. That's yeah. also in the My Voiceovers yeah. and My Music. That's where you would be managing any of the MP3s you're uploading yourself. Yeah, and, and I don't think I have any here local um, quickly. But what, what I would do when I add my music, you will also have this, this volume. So you can select how loud you want your voice. And then you can select how loud you want your music. So I always dim down the music. Um, I will actually knock it down depending on the song. Sometimes we have very upbeat songs and sometimes we don't. I, I will play around with it a lot to hear how it sounds. I just like it to be something in the background. So usually anywhere from like four to eight is mm -hmm. typical of the music that I bring in. And then my recorded 
uh, voiceover will always be, I keep it at 100%. And we assume that people are probably listening to these with headphones if they're in an office location, so they're not disturbing other people. So we, I always go back and listen on headphones to see what it's truly going to sound like. Yeah, that's a great tip. Uh, I've got a kind of a related question here from Priscilla, who's asking, can you start the voiceover in the middle of a slide? It always seems to start at the beginning. I want it in the middle of the slide. Do you have a recommendation for her there? I just want, do want to say that Priscilla, unfortunately, no, when you're doing voiceover per slide like this, it will begin at the beginning of your sound file will begin at the beginning of the, uh, of the slide. Do you have any thoughts about ways to, uh, to get around that limitation, Amy, for when, if you want I... to have a certain thing happen? Go for it. Yes, we've actually we've actually had to do that before. So I don't whatever voice um, whatever voice recording software you're using. We personally like to use Audacity. Mm -hmm. It is a free download and it works wonderfully. So for instance, if I want something to start uh, like seven seconds in, mm -hmm. what you can do is you can go and actually add silence before the voice starts or when you're recording you can just sit there count to seven and then start recording and if you've got background noise in um, in your studio or wherever you're recording even if it's at home you can still go select that mo that moment of silence and then um, you can eliminate any background noise that you may have so yeah that is an option and again i know a wide variety of people use different things we really like audacity um it's you can see the little icon right here on my screen down here it's it's wonderful it's very simple to use it has lots of different um ways to um amplify or, or do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Imran is asking, should I record my voiceover first and then create the video or first create the video and then do my voiceover? So that is an excellent question. What I have found is easier is you have your script. I like to record my audio first um, because once you've got your audio, you can tailor your video around it. Uh, like for instance, I, you know, I may have, Hey, they want me to talk about these three protocols. Mm -hmm. So I record that now I can build my video around these three protocols, whether it be an image, whether it be text, whatever it needs to be. So again, everybody's different. I have found, and I used to do it the other way. I used to get all excited and create my video. And then I got my script and I was like, oh, this is, I'm going to have to go back and really redo a lot of work that I did. So mm -hmm. I find by being able to record my audio off of my script, that storyboard, really important, has made, I, it actually cut down my time in creating videos immensely. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I think that's an excellent, excellent tip. And I know that for me as well, the other thing that I love about doing the voiceover first, if you're going to have a voiceover, is those happy accidents, those little moments of humor because of the timing of when something comes on screen vis-a-vis -vis the timing of what you're saying in the voiceover. I, I find that those are really hard to plan for. You can have an idea around those sorts of things, but you can also sort of draw them out when you when you you know already the broad strokes you know what part of the voiceover is going to be on which slides you know the general visuals but when that visual comes in you know that you have so many opportunities to really coordinate it to make it look like you really planned all of those things to go completely together but the truth is when you're really just tightening up and uh, and getting everything um, looking great in the studio all the little timing all the little things like that it's so much easier to match your visuals to an existing audio than to otherwise you'd need to right. keep like oh okay i guess i gotta do take two let me try and <laughs> match this again definitely much easier to go voiceover first and then to create your video uh let's see exactly here. and and we have a great oh go ahead. no no go ahead please oh i was going to say we have a great example right now in the video i'm working with um the video or the script has me say like three three things like safety compassion and some something else and so what's great is i record the audio and then i can have those words pop up at the exact moment that i'm saying them mm -hmm. and that's really impactful as well yeah. yeah 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 i think that's an important thing to draw out that the ability to use text to emphasize those most important ideas you really want to land and and resonate with people i think that that's uh 
one of the most important things. I have another, just one last uh, uh, question here, uh, and and I think uh, this is this is a really interesting one. It kind of relates back to that question about slide length and and all those sorts of things. Is there a way to have information on a slide for more than twenty seconds without it looking choppy? Uh, do you? I, yeah. I actually, I actually could very quickly show uh, something if you wanted, or or you could yes, if, yep. if you wanted to. I could actually just kind of direct you to it. So if you have, uh, uh, yeah, yep, yep. If you have, uh, if you want to just go ahead um, and make the slide we're on, the one you're on, uh, this ConAgra slide, okay. just make the length Conagra of the slide line. down. Go down to the timeline on the right and press plus 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 till we get past twenty seconds. Up, oh. and, and I'm it says, at each slide is limited to twenty seconds. Up. Oh. <laughs> press it. Press the plus again so we can see that that uh, warning. Oh yeah, there it is. All right, each slide is limited to twenty seconds. Continue your video or scene on the next slide. So click continue there. And what it should do here is show us it's made a new slide and all of the elements should have made a new slide. All of the yep, elements yep, yep, on that slide now are pushed all the way to the beginning of the new slide. So if as long as you don't have any exit uh, um, transitions for, you know, e exit movement animations for your elements on screen in the previous one, then it should be seamless. Now, in this one, for instance, I'm just going to throw this up there. Yeah, up at the top, you've got animation for each one of these boxes. So you will need to go through and just one by one kind of turn off the, the individual animation for those boxes. Mm -hmm. So if you click settings on any one of those. Just click that, click the settings, and then you see, no, you see, oh, not not that, that's entry exit. Oh, but sorry. You, it's okay. Sorry, uh, sorry. See animation right above color. Oh, there we go. Yep, sorry. Yep, and just click no animation. And that way, there we go. otherwise at the beginning of the slide, it'll do its animation once, which is that sort of extending out uh, that Amy showed us earlier. So if, yeah, you could do zero, you could just do no animation. Uh, and then that would be the way so to be sure that um, the transition is seamless. The other thing to do there, this is the time not to use a transition between the slides, right? Mm -hmm. Because that will obviously interrupt the flow. But if you don't have a transition there in between the slides and all of the elements on the slide begin at the top of the slide following, or you clicked continue and the software automatically put it on the next slide there for you, then you shouldn't see any visual disruption at 20 seconds. So I hope that answers that question. We are 12 minutes over. I am so sensitive to everyone's time here. I know that we, uh, that we uh, have a lot, all of us have a lot of work to do. Uh, if it's all right with you, I, I would love to just kind of jump back, take control of our presentation again. Show my screen, get the presentation back up. By the way, you guys will notice that this is, in fact, a Powtoon presentation we've been looking at in slideshow mode, uh, which I think is one of the best uh, ways to use slideshow mode is for uh, webcasts, online presentations, webinars, things like that. I've, I've really had a lot of luck with that. I do want to thank you, Amy, so much for taking time and sharing your expertise with everyone on the call today. Uh, if people want to learn more about ConAgra Brands, please visit ConAgraBrands.com. Take a look at what their COVID-19 response is all about and see uh, all of the fruits of Amy's hard work, all of these incredibly well-trained people being sure that food continues to get to citizens all over the United States and all over the world. Uh, Amy, again, thank you so much. And thank uh, you. I also awesome. I, I saw I saw lots of questions coming in there that oh will this be recorded will this re be recorded yes you will receive a recording of this very training tomorrow via email so don't worry fear not uh, you'll be able to go through all of these whenever you like please also email us webinar at powtoon.com me and my blue lady friend there uh i'm very happy to get all of your feedback if there's questions we didn't have time to get to today uh it'll help us figure out what to do in the next skill builder webinar We're, like i said we are trying to do these at least once a month uh so uh exciting times and and we and i gotta say we just also love hearing from all of you hearing about the amazing things that you're doing with powtoon with video visual communications connecting people it's amazing stuff. I want to say stay safe, stay connected, and stay awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you.